Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rocky Mount Pro Church. I am Katie, joined as always by the evil genius of professional wrestling, Titus Machiavelli. Titus, what a night of action we have here tonight in our main event. I'm having a hard time hearing you. In our main event tonight, the return of Unholy Trinity as she goes one on one with Lola. What an amazing night that's going to be. But also tonight, Balaam Lynx takes on the devil himself, Ronan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick the night off. Let's kick it off some great action tonight as Orin Veidt takes on Echo. That's next here on Charged. This match is just for one fall. Introducing first from the island of Guam, weighing 175 pounds, the Mockingbird. I gotta tell you, right off the bat here, Katie. Now, you would expect Bud Bellflower to be here, but in tow, the Twitch champion, the bearded lady, walking out as well. Very interesting combination. Oh, it is an interesting combination, but you know, you gotta believe that Echo maybe getting a little bit of moral support here, some backup, not just from Bud Bellflower, but also the bearded lady. And what better moral support do you have than the Twitch champion? I can't disagree, but I gotta wonder, what does Bud have up his sleeve? Yeah, everything he does has purpose and meaning. Just gotta wonder. And his opponent, weighing 203 pounds, the Wizard King, or Bud! Oh, this is someone I love watching here on Rocky Mountain Pro, Titus, the Wizard King, Orin Vite. Orin Vite has come on the scene here. He's known as a death match master, but he has come here to Rocky Mountain Pro, and he has put on some clinics, most recently with Balaam Lynx. And that's something that, you know, Orin Vite, he and I talked about a little bit ago. Very proud of his hair. He's very proud of his deathmatch style and his accomplishments all over the world, as he should be. But let's not forget, he is one of the best technical and pure wrestlers here in Rocky Mountain Pro. Maybe the region, maybe the country. I cannot disagree or invite big things. I can feel it in my gut coming for this man here. Where's those scars you can see on his back and in his chest? Where's his badge of honor for all the things that he, wow. What a, what, a, uh, what a start to charge tonight here, KD. Well, this is going to be a hell of a match and a hell of a way to start off charge, ladies and gentlemen. And let's talk about Tyson, what we just saw a second ago before we came on air. Curtis Cole, I haven't seen him in a few weeks, but after, after being, you know, well, assaulted and, I guess, bad kid, bagged and tagged and kidnapped and taken, I guess, oh boy. where is he? Well, I don't know, but apparently somebody found him, and they've been filming him as uh, he's been on his, on his way. I don't know if he's on his way back here, if he's on his way back to Pittsburgh, who knows? All right, or invite getting himself set up. Referee Eli has called for the bell. This is an official matchup now. And ladies and gentlemen, you can always join us here on Rocky Mountain Pro. Follow us on social media. There you see Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the Rocky MTN Pro. Okay, so not even steel chairs or thumbtacks or lots and lots of blood? All right, both men sort of feeling each other out. Well, there you hear Bud Belfler was outside mocking uh, the, the, the history of Orrin Veidt, saying you know, he's all about steel, of steel chairs and thumbtacks, but, but you know, Orrin Veidt telling him, I'm not going to use thumbtacks and chairs in this match. I don't need it. Can't that, that kind of match. Look at Echo, seems surprised already, taken maybe off his game already by Orrin Veidt, and maybe expecting more of a brawling style from Orrin. Instead, Orrin's been taking it to him technically. Well, Orrin, as you mentioned, a very good technical wrestler. Uh, he doesn't need, in my opinion, to do death matches. Doesn't need to put himself through glass and barbed wire. His in-ring wrestling ability is very, he's a high acumen inside that sport circle. And uh, the offensive, the unique offensive ability of Echo, uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup, that is for sure. Well, I was just about to say a great pure athlete is Orrin Veidt, but a high flyer is Echo. Not just a high flyer. The man actually knows how to take it to the ground. Knows how to tie in knots, if you will. And that's quite the interesting uh, collection of styles oh, between these two men. Little flippy do there by Orin Veidt. Oh, beautiful drop kick. You could almost say, Tyus, with these two athletes especially, you never judge a book by its cover here in Rocky Mountain Pro. These two men, well, if you were to put anybody on that cover, it would be these two. I couldn't agree more. 
Uh, Katie, I don't, I don't like agreeing with you that often. But you I'm just gonna, hate when I make great points because uh, you didn't make them first. Back to the ring. <laughs> All right, Echo really taking this time, trying to put it up. Wait. See the height that Orr might sent Echo up in the air for that hip toss. And Echo, well, he's powdering a little bit, maybe he's getting some distance. I don't think he knows what to make of this match so far. I think Bud Bellflower is just as beclimped out there as is the bearded lady. Well, this is why you pay the money for a manager like Bud Bellflower. All right, he had plan A. Plan A isn't going. Oh, and go here comes B. Orrin Veidt right in the face of Bud Bellflower. He's asking the referee if he can hit Bud Bellflower, if he can throw a hand on Bud Bellflower. Oh, a nice, nice move there by Echo using Bud Bellflower as a distraction, shoved him to the side and kicks him right in the side. His movements are very odd, too, uh, that being uh, Echo. Well, that they are. You never know where they're coming from, how fast they're going to come, how slow they're going to come. Yeah, from. Eagles, too. It's a very odd fighting style that Echo has developed for himself that he has brought to Rocky Mount Pro. One that's well led him to some success here, as not many people have been able to, even if they're able to get a victory over Echo, they always say the same thing. It was the weirdest match I've ever involved myself in. I hear that often. Big chops. Oh! Orrin Veidt lighting up the chest right here in front of the of Mockingbird. Here comes Orrin Veidt again. We've seen. There you see that beautiful senton. Goes for the cover. One, two. And notice that, Ty. It's a great move there by Orrin. Hits the senton. Does not get up. Wastes no motion. Nearly hooks the leg. Goes for a cover. You get a man on the ground. Even if you don't feel like you're going to get the three count, get the one. Get the two count. Make them exert the energy that they don't have later in this Ooh, matchup. Nice enziguri by Echo. Pulls away. Hits Orrin right in the side of the head with that kick. Goes for the cover. One, two. Only a two count says referee Eli. Not a lot of upper chest to chest, uh, not putting a lot of pressure, not working the leg, not getting any fulcrum, not a great cover. But again, as I said, gets Oren Veidt to use a little energy he won't have later. Well, we know Echo's known as the Mockingbird. Might have just been a mocking cover there by Echo. Ooh, do you hear the shot right to the chest? And now a chop to the chest by Oren Veidt. These two men are going to blister each other's chest before this night's over. Ooh, just a glance there. Wasn't a, as, as much as he was wanting, I don't think. Oh. Man, this is some hard, hard hitting style pro wrestling. I love it, KD. Nice forearm there by Echo. And let's not forget, most people would look at Echo, um, a man his size, and would think there's not a lot of power. But when you get close to Echo, you realize the man is all muscle. That is just tight, hard muscle on this man. And he gets such you know, a spin, such momentum behind his kicks. He strikes, yeah. he moves and uses his whole body to strike people. Or or what is he doing? On the top rope, walking the rope is the, the acrobat. Walking the rope, and a beautiful Meteora takes down Oren Veidt, and Echo gets right back to his feet like nothing happened. Quickly goes for the cover, one, two. Long kick out there. And you see, but the defiant as all his orange bite, letting Bud Bellflower know that he is number one in his book. Oh, uh, look at the eyes of Echo. Very surprised that uh, Orton was able to kick out of that, that combination. I think we all were. Ooh. Oh, beautiful STO by Orange Bite. Now look at that, spins him up, gets him back to his feet, sets him up. Beautiful snap suplex. How about that, Tice? A maneuver to take somebody up just to put him right back down. Goes for the cover one. Only a one count. Only a one or two count. Two count. I was going to say. Did I miss one? There's no way Echo can lose in a regular match against this guy. Great matchup here so far. The opening match here at Rocky Mountain Road Charge. Picks him up. Oh, but Echo's able to get back down to his feet. Shoves Orin Vite into the turnbuckles. Big double knee in the corner. Oh! <laughs> and just a kick right to the mush. Picks Echo up on his shoulders. Electric chair position. What is he looking to do here? Oh! I think, I think he was going for maybe a poison Rana there, but the weight of Orrin Veidt would not go all the way over. Here he comes. Big, beautiful lariat. We've seen Orrin Veidt take a man like, like Derek Stone. He put him away with that lariat before. He did. That's absolutely right. 
Now both men recovering. Un unable to follow up, though, KD. He, that run that was enough to really sort of even that nip up. Not very strong. His equilibrium looks a little off. He's yeah, Warren White looks fight. a little dazed off that. But Warren White, he's going to fight to the end of this one. Lady my bearded lady up on ringside there. Oh, and there's a shot right to the bearded lady. A little unprovoked, I would say. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Echo. German suplex drops. Aaron Oren Vite right on his head. Not good for Oren right now. As we saw, that poison runner may have taken a lot more out of Oren Vite than we expected. I don't know about the, uh, the, the unnecessary uh, attack on the Twitch champion. Well, Beer Lady got involved, got what she deserved. Echo goes all the way up, going for a double stomp, gets out of it. Orn, nice shot right to the face of Echo. Looks like he's going to pick him up. Variation of the Falcon Arrow. Referees being distracted here by... Wait, oh, wait a minute, Beer Lady. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think Beer Lady just snuck something in. Oh, wait a minute. He did. He stuck in that, snuck in that title belt. Or Vite went for the... Uh, for an elbow, covers one, two. Oh, come on. Brilliant. Brilliant of his match. Echo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you just saw it, Bearded Lady threw that championship belt in. Echo was able to take a hold of it, put it on his chest as Orin Fight came off for that beautiful elbow drop, landed right on the championship. And a victory for Echo here in the Three Ring Circus over Orin Vite. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we have quite the announcement about a great match and a one-of-a-kind situation coming up here in Rocky Mountain Pro. That's coming up next here on Charge. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? The peak of the pack coming to Rocky Mountain Pro. As we said earlier, ladies and gentlemen, we have an announcement to make. Let's go ahead and make that announcement about, well, the peak of the pack. Well, we're going to be uh, having a special matchup on May the 28th, a special supercharged event. This peak of the pack is going to be the headline of that. I believe next week on Charged, uh, we're going to uh, have more details about what's going on there. But far as I know at this point is we're going to have eight tag teams randomly selected. Eight. They're going to compete in this ring in an elimination tag team match. As a team is eliminated, the next one comes in until there is one tag team left. When that one tag team is left, a special situation will happen, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to keep you in suspense. We're going to make you wait till next week that's to right. tell you what that special announcement is going to be, ladies and gentlemen. But Peak of the Pack, Supercharged, that's coming up very, very soon. Very soon. This match is set for one fall. Introducing first, being accompanied by Legion. Woo! Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we see Ronan, the leader of Legion, flanked by Brumach, Abatu, and Lilith Grimm. Legion is in full effect here tonight. So when you see one, you see all of them. That is how they, they run as a pack. Uh, you talk about the wake, what the wake does, and the circus does what the Everywhere is a member of the Legion. They follow around. It's, it's scary to be here. This man, he 
does claim himself to be the Prince of Denver type. Could he be bringing his own army, his own court to Rocky Mount Pro in this city? And there we see a, a, one of Dilo's best friends is now trying to uh, talk to you. You're going to learn Balaam. He's beside me, isn't he? Pardon me? His opponent, from Denver, Colorado, weighing 190 pounds, the Wildcat, Caleb. Sit next to me and walk to that side. Well, the way I see it, it's it's kind of like it's it's kind of like a T-Rex. If I don't look at him, if I don't move very quickly, maybe he won't see. Me. I agree. All right, lots of history here going back. Uh, Ronan, a number of weeks ago, tried to recruit Baylor Prince to join Legion, saying, "You want to be an apex predator? You want to be a predator here, Rocking Mountain Pro? I can do that for you." Well, Baylor did turn down the. Uh, the invitation, it seems, to join Legion. One would say that's probably it. As I'm being, a horrible idea. Terrible idea to join Legion. Legion, Legion number one fan. I'm number one fan. Nothing can me that. Beautiful takedown there by Balin Links. Goes for the cover quickly. I spoke with Dale, Dale Lynch earlier. Very excited for this opportunity against Ronan one on one. Uh, he'll show Ronan what he's really, really capable of. Now, Balin with a quick go behind on, on Ronan. And let's us not forget Ronan. Oh, look at that cover one. Quick roll up. Ooh. Not sure what Balaam was going for, but Ronan stopped him dead in his tracks. Remember, way back in January at Aces Wild, uh, on the pre-show, we had a battle royal. The winner of that battle royal would get a future charge championship match opportunity in the future. Roman won that battle royal, and it's still, it's in his back pocket, KD. He does have that opportunity to uh, take on the charge champion whenever he so desires, has yet to give out when he exactly is going to do that. Now, this isn't like a, a cash in anytime you want to. You have to announce that you're going to exercise the contract. That, that we have now learned. It's not, it's not a, dare I say, in the bank sort of situation. He has to claim that he wants it and what day and what way he wants it. So. The thing I know about Roman, and our history goes back, he is a crafty individual. He will only let that happen when he is absolutely ready to do so. You gotta wonder when, with milestone season coming up, is that something that, is that something Roman is looking forward to? There you see, claps the head of Balaam Lynx. That's gonna disorient you. That's, really, that's an old school uh, wrestler move right there. Really messed with the equilibrium in the ears. There we see Balen Links now fighting back on, Ro on Ronan. I'm having a little fun here. Right oh, I mean, Ronan picks him up. Beautiful body slam. Drops him down hard. Comes off the roof. Did you see the speed on that elbow? He might be big and scary, but he might not be so smart. Well, he is staying right next to you. I wouldn't say anything about that. Oh, it's really. Just you and me, no one else. Except for a worldwide audience right here on track. I didn't think this through, right? And Ronan now going right back to work on a down Balin Links. As again, all the members of Legion are circling the ring right now. Rubox on our right. Oh, did you see that beautiful Capoeira kick there by Balin Links? Here comes Balin off the ropes, going for some momentum, but oh, stops with that knee right to the gut. Ronan is such a crafty veteran. He knows move, counter move, counter to the counter. Now he's surrounding himself by a monster, like a Batu. Uh, 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 an absolute, I don't even know what the word I mean. You, the Buffalo, Rumak, he's a monster as well. And the demon, Lilith Grimm. I, he is as dangerous now as he has ever been. Oh, look at this, a, a little bit of a camel clutch, KD. That's a beautiful camel clutch. All the pressure right on the lower back of Balaam and corking on that neck as well, but too close to the ropes. Beautiful ring awareness there by the youngster. Referee cannot see. Hands on the ropes. Referee's missing it. It's a he has the opportunity. He should be broke. Up. It should be broke, KD. This should be broken. Referee Max Larson out of position, not seeing the hold there. Sees it there, but how much damage was done. Now 
Now Ronan get right in the face of referee Max Larson as Balaam Links. That was not a good situation for Balaam Links to be in as he was holding onto that rope for probably a good 20, 30 seconds, and the hold was just being applied. Well, you know, I, I gotta wonder if, you know, what, what great ring positioning by Ronan has the referee sort of out of the position, missing that whole thing. I, a crafty move by Ronan. Now Bayon Links in the corner. He is in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, as Ronan is just taking control of this match. Almost since the onset, slight bits of offense there by Bayon Links. Well, there we see a beautiful forward front drop kick pops up. You see his back seems to be hurting him a little bit. Yeah, he was in that camel clutch a long time. Ducks the clothesline by Ronan. Picks up and up. Fireman's carry by Balaam Lynx. I love that back hold out. He's got to do something with it. Beautiful stomach right across the stomach ties. Then you got a knee across the uh, abdomen of the Prince of Denver, Ronan. Maybe right across the ribs as well. What is Bayon Lynch going for here? Look. Not sure what he was going for, but Ronan stops him with a nice hard slap right to the side of the head. One of the great things about Bayon Lynch is he has a very innovative offensive style, but that also can backfire. Oh, well, nice back step. elbow there by Bayon Lynch. Climb into the second rope. Look at this. He's in the roll up, goes for the cover. He's got the legs. It's one, victory roll. two. He's got him. Gets him with the victory roll. The winner of this match. For Wildcat, Baylor Links outsmarts the print. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. There's Brumach. And in comes a Batu as well. Now, all of Legion, Lilith Grimm joining in on the fun as all three members are just attacking Balaam Links while Ronan watches on. And look at the sick, sadistic smile on Ronan's face as Balaam Lynx is being taken apart here by the members of Legion. Oh yeah, there's the snap of the fingers. Snap of the fingers and they just stop, KD. That seems to be the MO of Legion in past months. Ronan has such a psychological hold on these three that all he has to do is snap his fingers and they do his bidding. Look, great offensive intelligence by Balaam Lynx. Took an opportunity with maybe three months ago, two months ago, he wouldn't have seen. Right here. Hey, you heard Ronan, another lesson learned. Balaam might have won the battle, but is he going to lose this war? Let's well, he very well with... could. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next here on Shark, we hear from Lipto for the first time since his title opportunity against Dustin Urich at Aces Wild. Never broken. Never broken. That's next here on Shark. Yo, J.K. Pop, I had to take a couple weeks off from Rocky Mountain Pro, just kind of recollect my thoughts. So you guys took everything I worked for. These past couple months, I went to Aces Wild in a tournament against three of Rocky Mountain Pro's best. I went to war with Damon Ace for damn near 20 minutes. I proved I belong in the main event, number one contender. I showed up to Never Broken. Me, Dustin Urich, I had my family in there. My son, Lipto Jr., sitting ringside, watched what you guys did to me. See, I knew things in the back were going on with Filter, he got jumped, Final Boss got jumped. You guys even staged your own little thing, and I, I don't get it. See, I trained with you guys, I traveled with you guys. I used to hang out on the weekends with you guys, you know. I don't know what's in it for you guys to join The Wake, Dustin Eric, and Damon Ace. But I'm going to tell you what's in it now. See, my focus was the Rocky Mountain Pro Championship, and that's still the main mission. I'm going to be Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. But right now, my focus solely on J.K. Pop. See, I'm going to beat your asses, and I'm going to take them Rocky Mountain Pro Tag Championships. Introducing first, me to come by Bud Bellflower. Three, ring, circle! Well, there we see him, ladies and gentlemen. Two of the three members. Just gets weirder and weirder here. 
we get legion and, 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 and bone skulls and, and buffaloes. And now we've got, what, what is going on around here? There are some bizarre human beings. Well, Tyus, I, I asked, you know, D'Lo Brown a couple of weeks ago how he felt about chicken earrings. How do you feel about chicken earrings? I'm not a fan. Not a fan whatsoever of chicken earrings. You've got Monster Nine here with this. And there goes the chicken. And another chicken. I have better lawyers than Bud Bellflower. I'll own the chicken. I'm being pelted by rubber chickens. Rubber chicken ah. factories. And his opponent. And his opponent. We see Legion still running out here just a little bit ago. Flanked now by uh, Abatu and Brumok of Legion. Well, Legion has been... Uh, you stay away from me. You got four very big, strong... I'm going to call them hosses. We're in for one heck of a... Uh, Tag team matchup here, KD. We're going to see the Buffalo Rumok and his partner Abatu of Legion taking on uh, the former number one contenders for the Rocketman Pro Tag Team Champions, Mr. Happy and Monster Nine, led by Bud Bellflower of the Three Ring Circus. There's not been a lot of love lost between these two teams. There's been a few moments here and there where things have gotten heated. Neither side are very much a fan favorite, you could say, KD. Definitely not. The fans seem to not be very happy with any, either side in this contest. There's the bell. Wait a minute. Mr. Happy calling for a timeout early. Oh, wait a minute. Mr. Happy's got a Brumach. It's like a Brumach uh, face mask. Mr. Happy just having a good old time here at the hands of, Bru or at the uh, expense of Brumach. KD, here's something I'm gonna point out, just I'm watching the, 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 the area here. You've got Bud Bellflower on one side, you've got Ronan on the other. Both men very, very crafty. Who's gonna have the better game plan tonight? Well, I think in the fans' eyes, they'd be fine if all of these men ended up just falling into a hole and then you'd put away the hole. And then they hear the high squeals of Abatu. Some very interesting people here in Rocky Mountain Pro these days, KD. Very, very. A little couple, couple of technical there. Sorry about that. Everything's good now. Back here for uh, this matchup, you got Mr. Happy in serious trouble in the corner of Abatu and uh, Rumach. Not the place you want to be, Katie. No, not at all. Right now, it's like they said, dissecting that corner in half, or that ring in half, and keeping Mr. Happy in their side. Now Mr. Happy coming back with some chops right to the chest, or excuse me, the forehead of Abatu. Wild swing there by Mr. Happy. Bots using those nails right across the back of Mr. Happy. Bud Bellflower checking on well, part of his investment. Bud not very happy over there in the corner. He's got, uh, what is that? That, that, that unicorn, that's hot dog? That hot dog D unicorn. The, uh, the very favorite pet of Mr. Happy is about to just drive in that right to the chest. The resident haha uh, -ha man yeah. of the three ring circus. Oh, just the wrong, the wrong corner there, Mr. Happy. You're tagging the wrong guy. Happy's in serious trouble. That shrieking voice of Mr. Happy, it just, it's, it's, it's unnerving for me. I'll let you know. And I'm not afraid of clowns, KD, but the, the voice of Mr. Happy, not pleasing. No, not whatsoever. Is Mr. Happy now trying 
to everything he can to get back into this match. Tags into the big monster nine. Hard shot right to the face of Brumach. All right, big monster nine. Spicer, referee Spicer, he's got some serious problems here. He has got a lot of people out here. He's slowly feeling like he's losing control, KB. You've got Bud out there. You've got Lilith and Ronan, who yet at this point have not done anything whatsoever. None of these participants have. Ooh. Kick to the thigh. Big uh, elbow here from about to on Mr. Happy. What? I think I got this, dude. Oh, you got this, Happy? You got this? Yeah. Oh, in serious trouble here, KD. He's got to get to that corner and tag in his partner. He's launched tonight. Come on, get Oh, through the legs, and a tag to Monster 9. Through the happy legs, and a tag to Monster 9. The two, uh, I would say two big men, but it looks like Bruach and Abatu are about the same size in this contest. Yeah, that's, a, that's a lot of beef. Oh, what a clothesline by Monster 9. Beautiful clothesline drops down Abatu. Nobody does that to Abatu. Not very easily, at least. And Monster 9 just took him down like it was nothing. Now shot right to the chest. There's Bly with a uh, hot dog in the face of Abatu. I'm not sure Abatu even, how do I eat that stuff? You know? Oh, look at this, just a fish hook right here, Katie, ripping the face of the monster Abatu. Blood is running from his mouth, it appears. He's licking the blood up, he likes it. That's, That's something Abatu sounds about right for Abatu. Nice. Yeah. Great, uh, tag there by Three Ring Circus. Abatu pushing out. Pushing out. Monster 9 is a little top to the throat there. Now choking the big Monster 9 he is about to. They cut off that, that ring. Now look at Bud Bellflower's getting involved. Bud Bellflower on the apron here. Referee not paying. He's. The referee's distracted with Ronan over here. Well, right now, I think Bud Belfar is doing more harm than good for his man. What is going on? Wait a minute. Ronan not liking Bud being involved. Right now, Bud Belfar, he should be uh, hitting the high trails. Legion got everyone surrounded here. Wait a minute. Bud slipping away behind Brumont. What is going on? Bud Bellflower getting the hell out of Dodge. This thing is just turning to an all-out powder keg out here, Titus. Both? Referee's completely lost control. He's gonna throw this one out. Oh, just a strike by Mr. Happy over here on Abatu, whose blood is flowing from his mouth. This has gotten way out of hand, KD. Well, it absolutely has gotten out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to take care of this situation. We'll be back with more charge after this. won your match against Ronan and then got attacked by the rest of Legion. What are your thoughts? What's going through your mind right now? <laughs> I said it last week. It seems like everybody needs to get a sucker punch in to get what they want out of me. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. That's It's in the past. It happened. I beat Ronan. That's all that matters. I beat the leader of this weird Legion, whatever they want to call themselves. I'm not worried about it. What happened? I'm not going to be joining these guys. 
I stand, stand, I stand tall and proud on my own. The future is set for milestone. That Colorado Cup, that's gonna be mine this year. That's my only focus. That's the only thing that's important to me right now. Whatever just happened, they can do it again. I'm not gonna stop. This match is set for one fall. Introducing first from Amazon Jungle, Wayne Five Little Monkeys, Lola the Adventure. Here at Rocky Mountain Pro, ladies and gentlemen, she has been on quite the win streak here, quite the run here in Rocky Mountain Pro. However, Titus, I unfortunately think. But tonight, it might all come to a screeching, screeching halt. Well, she has definitely got herself one dangerous opponent. All she can hope for, in my opinion, is that there's a little rust on that end. And her opponent, boom. Oh, how about that, Tice? The return of the Unholy One. Unholy Trinity is here. I, I, I got goosebumps, Katie. I've not seen her in the ring in years. Very excited to see her back. The very first ever Lockettes champion. Well, and Lola, I think she's hoping to make a new friend. Not the time to make a friend, not the person you want to make a friend with. And not the person to make a friend with. Good move there by Lola, taking the former champion, but a little bit by surprise. That holy train just going to work right here. And Lola, still that stable energy, that frantic energy is still around here in Unholy Trinity. She is, she looks to be in phenomenal shape. Oh, well, Lola trying to, you know, maybe a little uh, monkey on the tree action there by Lola. Not sure if it's gonna work so well though. Lola you know, Trinity definitely uh, holding up, trying to figure, oh! And this is somebody we've seen for the last several weeks taking, playing mind games with the Lockheed's champion, Rochelle Riveter. Tess, what do you think is the issue that Unholy Trinity obviously has with Rochelle Riveter? Well, I would be spitballing. I would be just, you know, fantasy booking, so to speak. But Rochelle Riveter has, been, has pretty much said that she is the top dog. She's the best women's wrestler in Rocky Mountain Pro. Um, this is the very first ever Lockheed's champion. This division was built on her back. Maybe she has something to prove. Well, let's face it, as, as you know, uh, oh a, a, my God. as good as a demon could possibly look, Unholy Trinity in great shape here after years away from the ring. Doesn't look like she's lost a step. Doesn't look like she, I mean, I gained a step, KD. Now, how about this, guys? I'm getting word in my ear that next week we've got a great main event. This is going to be an amazing main event tonight. But next week, a great main event as Damon Ace defends that charge championship against Bruce Wayans. Yeah, final boss getting a uh, opportunity to regain the championship that he lost not that long ago. Mary, like you said, that frantic energy of Unholy Trinity going to work on Lola, but Lola is able to get out, get away. Maybe said Tyson, a little, maybe a little bit of ring rust here from the Unholy One as Lola takes her down with a beautiful shotgun drop to cover. One, two. You know, also next week, Jumbo Zamori back in action, taking on the bearded lady in a non-title matchup. It'll be interesting to see what Jumbo has to say and how he's acting after that. Well, you know, the turn of events with J.K. Pop. Ooh, nice move there by Unholy Trinity. At Never Broken, you've got to wonder how his, where his heart lies right now. Yeah, you got to be conflicted as all can be. Worked his hard, his hardest. We connect with his old friends, only to have them go do something different. You got to wonder what's going on there. That's all. Next week, right now, we've got the Lockett's action in main event here as Unholy Trainer takes Lola down with a suplex covers. Only a two count. Now, Tyson, it's almost an interesting situation. Last time we saw Trinity, like we said, it's that frantic energy, that psychotic abilities of Unholy Trinity. And says, I'm noticing something a little off here. Is Unholy Trinity, last time she was out here, 
you know, she came off more of a, that, that corpse makeup, that, that dead-eyed look of Unholy Trinity. It almost seems as if Trinity's almost become a bit more human. It's like she's a different person in some ways. It almost is, yes, very much a, a different person we are seeing in this Unholy Trinity of 2021. I remember when Unholy Trinity walked in to Rocky Mountain Pro for the very first time. I was impressed then. So far, impressed now. There we are, the fans here of Rocky Mountain Pro, the Rocky Mountain Pro faithful, cheering on Lola the Adventurer. Right now, I don't think fans really know who to cheer for. They, they're excited, obviously, to have Unholy Trinity back, and obviously excited that she seems to be on the focus of Rochelle Riveter, but they do love them some Lola here in Rocky Mountain Pro. Look at that beautiful STO there by Lola, taken down on Holy Trinity. What a victory this would be for Lola here, Titus. Oh, this would catapult her. Uh, Unholy Trinity walks in, perceived as one of the top people in the division, and for Lola to just walk up and take her out, shows maybe she's oh, look at that. Lola was going for that DDT, gets out of it, and lays a nice hard clothesline. Does Unholy Trinity, nice pump kick right to the chest Did of not, Lola. Didn't get her where she wanted to. Got her lower on the body than the head. Oh, did you see that? A step over Sinton right across the back of Lola. That's something brand new out of Holy Trinity. Rolls her over. Goes for the cover. One, two. Not a full press there, though, for that cover. Maybe some ring rust, like we said, from Unholy Trinity. Snapmare over. Now trying to wear down Lola with that headlock. Not a bad man over here. Seems like all the frantic energy, all those high, fast pace moves doesn't seem to be working. Why not try to wear Lola down? Well, Lola is, you know, a, 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 a thicker woman. She's got more built. She has more to, to wear down. Uh, very good move there to be able to try to, you know, get her to have a harder time catching her breath. Oh, oh there was that pump kick again right to the chest. Here, Trinity, she's, she's acting for Lola to get up. She went looking for something. Oh, and another pump kick. See the sights to the side of the head. Now goes for the cover line. Two. She got her. Oh, victory for Unholy Trinity here on her return to Rocky Mount Pro action here on Charge and a victory over a very game Lola and what in the world has possessed Unholy Trinity recently. I, I tell you what, she is back, KD. The faithful seem to be excited about it. I'm excited about it. We now are on the road to Milestone. What is the plan for Unholy Trinity? Well, we will see what the plan for Unholy Trinity is. We will also see the plan for the Rocky Mount Pro Charge champion as next week, Damon Ace defends that Charge Championship against the former champion, Bruce Wayans. That's next week here on Charge, ladies and gentlemen. For Titus Machiavelli, I'm Katie. Thank you very much for joining us on Charge.